grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. So great to be able to gather together tonight to license Andy as the priest in charge of this parish and the team vicar of Great Bardo Trinity Ministry. And he has been around in this parish for some time, a few months now, uh, as your curate. And tonight he is licensed as priest in charge. So you all, I'm sure, are surrounding Andy in your prayers as he takes on this job and this responsibility. I also need to thank uh, all those who supported this parish during the interregnum, particularly before Andy sort of joined your staff. Uh, it was quite a longer interregnum, and, and thank you particularly to Mandy and, and the church wardens and uh, other lay leaders of this congregation for continuing to offer the witness and mission in this parish. So thank you once again, because I, I, I never had a chance to say that before. Um, uh, so today, uh, tonight, I just want to affirm our appreciation and thanks uh, to all those who supported ministry here over the last few years. And we do welcome Rachel also among us, no? I need to tell you that you are not getting actually two for one price. <laughs> 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 but, but Rachel is definitely, as the spouse of your priest in charge, uh, will be around and you will see her and she's part of your community that way. So welcome Rachel too. We have come together in the presence of God to welcome Andrew to this parish and to the benefits of Great Bardo Tea Ministry, to license him to the ministry he will share, to pray for him and for those who minister with him, and to dedicate ourselves afresh to the service of God in these communities and the call which God makes of each one of us. Let us therefore wait humbly upon God, giving thanks for all that God has done and asking forgiveness for those ways in which we have failed each other, our communities and God. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we know that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you appointed us to go out and bear fruit that will last. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Right Reverend Father in God, after due consultation and prayerful consideration, Andrew Brown has been nominated and has accepted to be priest in charge of this parish and team vicar in the Bado team ministry. I now present him to you to be licensed. I thank you Archdeacon and all those who with prayer have been involved in the appointment of Andrew to this benefice. Andrew, do you believe 
so far as you know your own heart, that God has called you to serve him. I believe that God has called me. Will you commit yourself to the mission and ministry of the people in this place to further the kingdom of God? With the help of God, I will. So people of God, will you welcome Andrew and support and uphold him in his ministry now and in the years to come? With the help of God, we will. Will you stir up the gift of God which is in you to work with Andrew for the building of God's kingdom here? With the help of God, we will. Let us pray. God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servant Andrew, now to be licensed, the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a, its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Maybe tonight we could make that much more sort of smaller in its application. You are the salt of your parish. And you are the light in your parish. But sadly, it doesn't say Andy is the light of the parish. 
It is you, in plural, you. So tonight, actually, we are affirming our role as the people of God, being the salt and light in this world. There is a danger when a parish gets a new parish priest. All those who very enthusiastically shared the leadership and ministry just think that they can take a back seat now. Finally, we got someone to do this job that we've been doing. But I keep on telling at every institution or every licensing that it doesn't belong to one person. Later on, in the service, I will be commissioning the team, all those who belong to the team of these two benefices. Because you are going to work together. Even that team don't really do the work. They just represent you. The work of mission is done by every member of the congregation. Or rather, we together, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. In plural. And then, you are the light. You are the salt. It's not you are like salt. You are like the light. No. You are. It is about being. It is not about saying the right things or doing the right things. You will say the right things and do the right things because you are something. This is about being the light, being the salt. One of the problems that often the society finds with the church is that we are not what we claim to be. We seem to have all the right messages, all the right doctrines, I heard the story about a debate between a French communist leader and a theologian, a church leader, in those days of revolution. They went on talking about what Christianity means and what Christianity teaches, and the communist leader talked about what the communism teaches. And finally, the communist leader said, I do accept that your teachings and doctrines are far superior to ours. But ultimately, you will fail because you do not do what you preach. And you are not what you are supposed to be. The challenge for Christian communities, for the disciples of Christ in this world, is to be the disciples, to be the message. It was Bishop Henry Camara who said, beware how you live. Because you might be the only gospel that some people will ever read. Beware how you live. You might be the only gospel that some people will ever read. What a terrible thought. <laughs> if you are the only Jesus, and what does it mean to be salt and light? That comes at the end of the Beatitudes, the sayings of Jesus about character. So in the context, it would mean that being light and being salt has something to do with the Beatitudes. The Christian commitment and character. That is the essence of saltiness and light. Do people see 
that Christian character and commitment, when they follow us, when they engage with us, what does it mean to be salt? I grew up in a village when we didn't have actually uh, refrigerators. I used to see my mom soaking pieces of uh, fish or meat in salt. Salt has many purposes. It preserves and it adds flavor and by its very character it just penetrates. That's what we are supposed to be. In our Christian commitment and character, we are people who will preserve the goodness and God's intention in this world. And we will add flavor in a world which, taste, which is probably tasteless. And light, similarly, penetrates into the darkness. I'm glad that actually whenever I go to the services, they print out a, a bigger kind of you know, font for me. Because this light is probably not good enough for me to read a point 0.8 or point 0.9 font. We need light to see. It is because of light we are able to read or we are able to see. You don't see anything in darkness. So if we are the light of the world, we will help the world to see. It's not only really that we see, we will help the world to see itself well. We will provide a perspective to the world. There are a lot of things that we don't see in the world. But with Christian character and commitment, we can enable the world to see itself better. I don't want to go on talking about what light and salt means. But basically, being salt and being light in the world is our essential calling. We preserve the goodness and God's intention in the world. We add flavor to the world. We help people to enjoy their life. To have a new taste in their life. Not as individuals, but as communities, as a society. And we help people to see better. You can go on explaining what that means. They will see themselves better. They will probably see God. They will see many things they are not seeing now because we provide that light. We should be able to give that light so that people can see themselves, see their world, and see God. That is our calling. Not just Andy's calling. I'm sure that Andy understands that is his calling. But I'm saying that we all are called to be salt and light. And Jesus almost ends that with a kind of warning. He seems to suggest that you can always lose the saltiness. If salt loses its saltiness, it is good for nothing. When Christians are without their Christian commitment and character, they are good for nothing. And that's sometimes how the world perceives us. Because we don't seem to be adding anything particular to the, to the world. We don't seem to be giving anything unique to them. And so for a person who might not even know what exactly you are preaching or teaching, by seeing the way we behave, the way we articulate ourselves, the way we conduct ourselves as believers, they don't, they don't have any benefit. They don't get anything out of us. 
we can lose, salt can lose its saltiness. And we need to ask whether we have lost our saltiness. Have we lost that commitment and character? That is sort of enticing. That is very much sort of always inviting others that people cannot even resist. Light should not be hidden, but sometimes we try. One of the things I sort of notice from coming from a very different culture where we were quite happy to talk about faith wherever we were was that faith becomes so private here. <laughs> we don't speak about it. That's what I mean by hiding the light. You can just hide. You are a Christian in the church on Sundays and Monday to Friday you are a very secular person outside there. A good number of us are not even happy to actually say that we are Christian or even we go to church. We need to be visible. The calling for a Christian or for a disciple is to be visible. That is light. You need to be visible. And that question I want you to ask yourself tonight. Are we visible as Christians? Are we able to touch the lives of other people because of our Christian commitment and character? Do people find anything at all encouraging and different in our lives? Are we helping them to see better? Are we enabling them to taste better in their own lives? I leave that for a reflection. Let's commit ourselves tonight as we license and receive Andy as your priest in charge and team vicar to be the salt and light in our parish. Let these congregations, the congregation here and the three congregations in Great Bardo Tea Ministry, let these be the light and salt of these benefices. May we be able to draw people to Christ. Not because of what we say, but because of what we are. We can make great claims. I'll just close with another story about one person I respect a lot, Mahatma Gandhi. I must have said it somewhere before, no? Gandhi, when India got its independence in 1947, was interviewed by a group of journalists from Syndicate Press. And they went to see Gandhi and as usual, Gandhi was sitting on the floor and knitting. And so they asked him, your dream is fulfilled. Your country is getting independence. And you have influenced millions of people in this country through your life of simplicity and commitment to people. What is your message to the world? And Gandhi continued knitting for another 30 seconds, and he just looked up and said, my life is my message. My life is my message. How many of us can actually say, not to make a claim, okay. ask Christian communities, can we say that our life, our behavior, our very existence is the message? You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. May God help us to be the salt and light in these two benefices in the days to come. 
Amen. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of the Savior. Take me as, as you find me, all oh, my fears and failures. Fill my life again, and give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. And so, in a moment, representatives of the Church of Our Saviour and the Great Bado Tea Ministry will present Andy with symbols of ministry. But first of all, we pray. Gracious God, we praise and we glorify you because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church that sharing in the ministry of our Saviour Christ, we might be witnesses of what he has done for us. Gracious God, we praise and glorify you. Andrew, be among us as a man who rejoices to bring new Christians to baptism and to share with them the living water, Jesus Christ himself. Together, by God's grace, we will grow in our faith and love.
Andrew, being among us as a man of reconciliation, showing God's forgiveness and healing. Together, by God's grace, we will be a Christ-like community of love. Be amongst us as a man who studies the scriptures, proclaims the word, and explores the faith. Together, by God's grace, we will tell the good news of Christ to the world. Be amongst us as a man of prayer. Together, Together by, by God's grace, we will worship, worship God in spirit and in truth. Be among us as a man, man of, of the, the Eucharist, Eucharist presiding among us when we celebrate the Lord's death and resurrection. Together, by God's grace, we will seek to be in living the body of Christ. Andrew, be among us as a man of unity, that we may have the full measure of the joy of Jesus among us. Together, by God's grace, we will walk together as one. That uh, actually should be the one before, so we'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, be among us as a man who embraces the rich variety of the church, that the manifold wisdom of God may be made known. Together, by God's grace, we will, we will hold, hold one, one another in bonds of mutual affection. Andrew, be, be among, among us as a man of unity that we may have the full measure of the joy of Jesus amongst us. Together, by God's grace, we will walk together as one. Jesus said, If anyone wants to be my disciple, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Andrew, be among us as a man who holds on to the cross of Christ and shares it with others. Together, Together by, by God's, God's grace, we will walk in the way of the cross. I pledge myself to lead the communities of faith committed to my charge, to share with them the word of God and the work of ministry, to celebrate with them the sacraments of the new covenant, and to encourage them in their discipleship and ministry. Together, may we make this a place where Christian people are equipped for their life and witness in God's world. Together, by God's grace, we give ourselves to the ministry of the gospel 
in these communities to work for the God's kingdom of justice and peace and to share the message of Christ. Church of England is part of the One 
Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, worship in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care. I, Andrew Brown, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness and in public prayer and administration of the sacraments I will own, use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Andrew Brown, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Andrew Brown, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Chelmsford, the area Bishop of Bradwell, and their successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. John Bishop of Bradwell, acting under powers delegated to me by the virtue of the Diocese of Chelmsford Area Scheme 1984. To a beloved in Christ, Andrew Paul Brown, clerk in the Holy Orders. Greeting. Whereas the benefits of East Springfield within the Diocese of Jurisdiction of the Bishop of Chelmsford now stand vacant. I do hereby grant you license and authority to serve as priest in charge of the said benefice and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office. And I also do hereby grant you license and authority to serve as a vicar in the team ministry established for the benefits of Great Bado within the diocese and jurisdiction of the Bishop of Chelmsford. And I invest you with all the rights and duties belonging to that office and commit to you a share in the cure of souls of the parishioners under the leadership of the rector in the said tea ministry. In testimony whereof, the Episcopal seal of the Bishop of Chelmsford is affixed to these presents, and I have subscribed the same this 11th day of January in the year of our Lord. 2022. Andy, receive this cure of souls, which is both yours and mine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Andrew, remember your baptism into Christ. Remember your ordination in the church of God. May God, who anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, anoint and empower you for the blessing of God's people. Amen. May I have the great Bardo and uh, East Springfield teams. Wayne, Wayne Burden, thank you, and Duncan. We face the bishop first. and faithfully with him, meeting regularly for prayer, study, and fellowship, and doing all in your power to support each other in fulfilling the ministry of Christ and working with the people of God in this place. With the help of God, we will. As we turn to face the congregation. Ministry, I commission you to work together with all God's people so that Christ may be made known and his kingdom established. The God of all faithfulness strengthen you for your ministry and commitment to each other. The God of all grace give you vision, courage, and joy, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all your work done in his name, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Andrew, I install you as priest in charge of this benefice, pray for your people, lead them in worship and service, and encourage them in their witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. The people of this benefice, I present to you your new priest in charge and the people of the Benefits of Great Bardo team, your new team vicar, now duly licensed and installed. And I invite you to greet him in the name of Christ. I commend him to your love and to your prayers. We welcome you. May the Lord richly bless you and make you a blessing among us.
So uh, now, as area dean, I have the privilege of inviting people to greet Andy uh, as our new uh, priest in charge and team vicar uh, and member amongst this community in his leadership uh, role. And I'm the first one up. So, Andy, I want to uh, uh, rejoice in your continuing presence in our deanery as area dean, uh, where you started your ordained ministry. Uh, and to welcome you as a fellow priest in charge uh, and team vicar amongst us, particularly in Great Bedo. And Jill, as our lay leader, is to bring her greeting on their behalf. Andrew, on behalf of all of the lay people in the Deanery of Chelmsford, I welcome you. I look forward to working with you as we seek to build the kingdom of God in this city. Thank you. And I would say that Andy was once a layman himself. Uh, and the reason Andy is so good is that we only have the lay people of the deanery to choose from. <laughs> James Sharp is director of the Chelmsford uh, Business Improvement District. Uh, and he's coming on their behalf to uh, welcome Andrew. And he is in particular uh, um, from the County Hotel. Andy, on behalf of the business community, welcome. Thank you, James. That's very succinct. <laughs> and the Reverend uh, Lytham Nevard is our URC moderator for the Eastern Synod. Thank you. Andy, welcome to the United Reformed Church Eastern Synod, as well as the joys and blessings of being part of the Church of England. With this being an ecumenical project, you also get to enjoy um, all the treasures of the URC. I've come from an ecumenical project myself, and I so much enjoyed finding out all the good things about the different denominations and then choosing the ones I liked best to go to. So <laughs> I hope <laughs> that I will see you at some of our things. I know you're going to be a blessing here, and you'll be in my prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Lytham. Uh, Alison King and Evelyn are coming uh, on behalf of the children's work of the Church of Our Saviour, this very place. On behalf of the Children and Youths Ministry and... And all the kids. <laughs> we welcome you to Church of Our Saviour. And as a, a present for you, Evelyn has... Some sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because um, for um, s'mores on the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give you to them to later, okay. okay. And didn't the bishop speak on the Beatitudes? Blessed are those who share their sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Clayton, ecumenical lead for Churches Together in Essex and East London. Welcome, Jenny. Andrew, on behalf of Churches Together in Essex and East London, I'd like to formally welcome you to this local ecumenical partnership. Thank you. Uh, the Church of Our Saviour wardens and uh, church officer, I believe, have a uh, presentation, a momentary, uh, a momentary event. Oh, it's James. <laughs> I hope I don't drop it now. Andrew, um, on behalf of everyone from Church of Our Savior and the church wardens and all the church leadership team, we'd like to formally welcome you. Uh, we're very blessed to have you here in our church, and we're looking forward to you leading us going forward in the coming years. Thank you. I'll leave this with Rachel. Okay. <laughs> Hang on, what's, what's in it? <laughs> uh, Richard Silvert is warden of the Church of St. Mary in Great Baddo, uh, and is coming to bring greeting from that congregation and community. Andrew, we uh, welcome you to the team. And from St Mary's, we're looking forward to working with you. We're looking forward to the chance to, to refresh and revitalise and for everything you're going to bring and the blessings that follow. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Wayne Burden from St Paul's in Great Baddo. Andrew, 
Andrew, on uh, behalf of the congregation of St Paul's, welcome to the benefits, welcome to the team, and God bless you in all you do, and I'm looking forward to working alongside you. And Duncan McKenzie is coming to greet you on behalf of the congregation of Meadgate Church. Andy, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you, not only to welcome you, but to welcome you back to Meadgate and to Great Baddo. And obviously your role is a broad role covering the Church of Our Saviour here and as well as across the Baddo team. But we look forward to working with you in the developing work and to your ministry with us. We look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. And he was, when he was a lay person, uh, a member of Great Baddo uh, team ministry and uh, Meadgate Church in particular. Bishop. We stand for the peace. We are the body of Christ. And in the one spirit, we were all baptized into that one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another peace. <laughs>
if when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you would respond, hear our prayer. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we lift up to you the world, a world that for so many can feel hard and heavy at the moment. We continue to pray for all of those who are affected by the current pandemic, for those who work on the front line in the NHS, and for those who have to make difficult decisions, for those who are suffering with COVID, and for those who have lost, lost loved ones as a result. We pray that we and they would know your hope in these times, and that you would be with those who are deeply affected. And we also pray for the climate emergency and that you would help all of us to be a part of the solution. Help us all to make wise choices in the way that we live. We pray for the politicians around the world whose actions will matter over the coming days, months and years. Help us to keep them accountable and help them to make wise choices. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church around the world. We especially lift to you our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith in you. And we pray that you would abide with them, that they would be protected, and that they would persevere and know your peace. We pray for the church in this country. And Holy Spirit, would you encourage all those who serve in various vocations? Would you equip us to be the church you have called and help us to minister to those in need? We pray for all of those in senior positions of leadership as they discern your voice. And this evening we especially lift to you Bishop John, Archdeacon Elizabeth and Lytham. And we pray that you would keep them strong in faith and deepen the knowledge of your love for them and your church in this area. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And gracious God, we pray for all of those who need your presence this evening, for those who face homelessness for another night, for those who don't know where the next meal is coming from, for those who are facing the loss of a loved one, for those who are ill, for those known to us and those who feel unknown at this time. We pray that they would know your comfort, your hope, your peace, your joy, and your provision. And where possible, equip us to be your hands and feet, to minister to them as your body on earth. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> it's the first time I actually just get to just talk. Um, this evening, anyway. Um, I'm supposed to give out some notices now, but um, before I do that, I'd like to uh, say some thank yous, uh, particularly to the bishop and uh, the archdeacon for all their support um, over this last season um, and for your support in helping us to arrive um, at this point. Um, it's, it's greatly appreciated, and um, yeah, thank you for everything that you've, you've been doing. Um, I'd like to thank Tim as well, uh, firstly for saying yes on behalf of the Great Bado team. Um, initially, and um, for, for welcoming me back uh, here as well, and for doing uh, so much to organise 
this evening. Uh, once again, it's, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, to Church of Our Saviour, I won't name you all by name because there's so many of you who do so many things in this place that we'd be here all evening. But to uh, all, all of you, thank you so much for the welcome that I've had uh, from April um, until now and uh, for the way that you have um, accepted not just myself but uh, Rachel into the community. Um, you've been absolutely amazing and we are really looking forward uh, to m hopefully many more years of uh, being here um, alongside you. And to the church wardens and the leadership team and the church council as well for the, uh, uh, all your support in getting here. And also um, I do need to thank Rachel um, who uh, has uh, come here and, and, and uh, settled in away from North London, um, uh, moved to a strange place. She, she once vowed never to move away from London and here she is in Chelmsford. So, um, but uh, she's a real blessing to me and um, hopefully as, as you get to know her, you, she'll, she'll be a real blessing to um, everybody here. On to the actual notices. Um, Tim asked, Tim advised me to tell you what my favourite restaurant was. The, the answer is probably, I thought about it long and hard, most of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice, easy one. Um, services, uh, are at no, uh, as far as we're at normal times on Sunday, uh, they definitely are here. Sadly, I won't be with the, the people uh, in uh, this community. I'll be with uh, the lovely folk uh, in St. Paul's. Um, I'll be preaching over there, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and uh, going forward, my time will obviously be split pretty 50-50 across all churches. For those of you who don't know, um, my day off is Friday. I'm pretty fair game the rest of the week. Um, but uh, my day off is on a Friday. And that's it for the notices. I believe I need to hand back over. Almighty God, who for the salvation of the world gives to his people many gifts and ministries to the advancement of his glory, stir up in you the gifts of his grace and sustain each one of you in your own ministry. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
The Cure of Souls is a ministry alongside all those who live or work in these communities. This church must be open to God's world and to all who seek him. Andrew, you are called to help the people who are refreshed here by their worship and fellowship to live out their faith in these communities so that God's love may be known. Together, Together by, by God's grace, we, we will be Christ's people at work in the world. The Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from, from this, this time, time forward and, and forevermore. There is one body, one spirit, one hope in God's call. One Lord, one faith, one, one baptism. There is one God, Father of all, over all and in all. To whom Christ ascended on high. And through his spirit he gives us gifts. Some are apostles, some are his prophets. Evangelists, pastors and teachers he gives us. So we can minister together. To build up his body. To be mature in the fullness of the Christ. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Come, you that are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Go in the power of Christ. We have a gospel to proclaim. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Question. Just you could stand for a minute, I suppose. Sun comes up, it's a new day dawn. 